On February 15, 2001, Fox aired a television program about the Apollo moon hoax. Exactly one week later, Tony Phillips wrote this article for Science at NASA. The Great Moon Hoax. Moon rocks and common sense prove Apollo astronauts really did go to the moon. The moon rocks are absolutely unique, says Dr. David McKay, chief scientist for planetary science and exploration at NASA's Johnson Space Center. There are isotopes in the moon rocks, isotopes we don't normally find on Earth, that were created by nuclear reactions with the highest energy cosmic rays, says McKay. So why were we told by geologists the exact opposite about the moon rocks in 1999? Back then, we were told the isotopes were the same as the Earth's. In 2001, we are told they are different. Bottom line, we know that these rocks are identical to Earth in many ways. The only materials that are uncommon to Earth are also commonplace with meteorites. No. Bottom line, in 1999, Dr. William Hartman said that Earth rocks and Moon rocks have the same oxygen isotope ratios. In 2001, Dr. David McKay said Moon rocks have unspecified isotopes created by high-energy cosmic rays that we normally don't see on Earth. Dr. McKay's cosmic ray-induced isotopes have nothing to do with Dr. Hartman's oxygen isotope ratios especially when referring to Earth rocks that are protected from cosmic rays by the Earth's atmosphere. Regardless of how Jared tries to twist their statements into a straw man argument between opposing factions of lying or ignorant scientists, these two particular scientists are clearly talking about two different things. As for moon rocks having materials uncommon with Earth rocks, yet commonplace with meteorites, where did that come from? Up to this point, all Jarrah says is that moon rocks are identical to meteorites because they contain radiation. So what materials do they have in common? Is Jarrah saying that radiation is a material now? This is a bare assertion fallacy that is clearly unrelated to any previous statements made by Jarrah, and he presents no evidence to back up this new claim. He just throws it out there. Actually, meteorites can easily be distinguished from NASA's moon rocks by their mineralogy, bulk chemical composition, and oxygen isotope ratios. About 85% of all meteorites that fall to Earth are common chondrites, which are composed mostly of silicate materials, olivine and proxene. While these silicate materials are found in moon rocks, many chondrites found on Earth also contain significant amounts of water and hydrous minerals due to their exposure to Earth's environment. Minerals not found in any moon rocks. Pound for pound, however, chondrites make up only a couple of percent of all the meteorites found on Earth. The more typical meteorites are iron or stony iron meteorites that contain dramatically larger proportions of elemental iron than found in any moon rocks. Essentially, William Hartman has confirmed my earlier theory that NASA used meteorite samples from one random origin or another, made a few alterations, and then claimed they picked it up from the moon. They made the fatal error by expecting that no one would actually send a probe to the moon to verify the lunar geology. And Jera made a fatal error expecting that no one would actually listen to what Dr. Hartman really said. Meteorites from Mars, meteorites from the inner asteroid belt, and meteorites from the outer asteroid belt all have different oxygen isotope ratios. Hartman said that NASA's moon rocks have oxygen isotope ratios common to Earth rocks, not meteorites. So there is absolutely no way any of NASA's moon rocks could be meteorites that were collected on Earth. And, even though moon rocks can closely resemble rocks found on Earth, they have a unique chemistry and crystal structure due to their formation on a relatively small, cold planet and the absence of any terrestrial-style weathering. In fact, by comparing NASA's moon rocks and the Luna samples to common meteorites and Earth rocks, scientists have developed a set of quantitative tests that they can perform to classify 
unknown rocks or meteorites. For example, the iron plus magnesium to aluminum ratios are higher in NASA's moon rocks than in Earth rocks, but generally less than in average chondrite. Similarly, the iron to manganese ratio is higher in NASA's moon rocks than in Earth rocks and less than the average chondrite. Arsenic and potassium, which are prevalent in Earth rocks, are practically non existent in NASA's moon rocks, an exception, of course, are the highly unusual creep rocks. Thorium and samarium, which are totally absent in chondrites, are more common to Earth rocks and, to a lesser degree, in NASA's moon rocks. And don't forget the oxygen isotope ratios that are the same for moon rocks and earth rocks and different in meteorites. Now, although scientists cannot prove beyond a shadow of doubt that a meteorite found on earth came from the moon or is identical in every way to any of NASA's moon rocks by using these ratio tests, each test has a particular degree of probability associated with it. And depending upon the result of all testing, where a particular meteorite happens to fall on each graph. Scientists can classify new meteorites with a high degree of certainty as to where they came from. So, to look at what we know, we have determined that absolutely none of NASA's moon rocks are common meteorites from one random origin or another if, for no other reason, than the oxygen isotope ratios are all wrong. And the materials found in NASA's moon rocks, whether they are common or uncommon with earth rocks or meteorites, have their own unique chemical signatures or elemental ratios that enable scientists to distinguish these moon rocks from earth rocks and meteorites. And at the end of the day, Jera has yet to offer any convincing evidence to suggest that NASA's moon rocks are nothing less than the genuine article. Ciao, Moon Hoax Conspirators, wherever you are.